It is well known that cancers exhibit extensive heterogeneity in a wide range of phenotypic and functional features. Within a tumor, significant differences can be found between cancer cells in terms of morphological characteristics. These features include cell surface markers, gene expression, proliferative and invasive capacity, and therapeutic response. Currently, two models have been proposed in the explanation of the heterogeneous nature of tumor cells. The first is the stochastic model which postulates that a small population of tumor cells acquires the appropriate mutations necessary to confer extensive proliferative capabilities. This capacity to become tumorigenic is equally probable of all tumor cells under this model. The stochastic model has traditionally been accepted as the basis of tumor heterogeneity. According to this model, cells in a particular tumor are mostly homogeneous and have an equal likelihood of unrestricted proliferation and initiating tumor formation. Phenotypic heterogeneity arises as a result of random exposure to a variety of intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Under a certain set of influences, some tumor cells will acquire properties that allow them to behave as tumor-initiating cells. Isolation of subpopulations enriched for tumorigenic potential is not consistent under this model, as every cell fraction is predicted to have some tumor-initiating activity. Most of the existing treatment approaches are based upon this model and target the bulk of tumor cells since each are thought to have the potential to behave like tumor-initiating cells. This model does not explain why some patients undergoing similar treatments relapse while others are fully in remission. The second model is the hierarchical model, or cancer stem cell model, which suggests that cells within a tumor follow a functional hierarchy in which the capacity for self-renewal and differentiation is limited to rare cancer stem cells. This model holds that cancer cell populations are organized in a functional hierarchy that mirrors a normal stem cell system, thus giving rise to distinct classes of cell types. At the apex of this hierarchy is a subpopulation of cancer stem cells that possess the capacity to self-renew and differentiate. However, these cells have acquired mutations that cause deregulated growth and tumor formation at the clonal level. It is these cells in which metastasis and long-term sustenance of tumors are dependent upon. The population that makes up the bulk of the tumor consists of phenotypically diverse, proliferating progeny of differentiated cancer stem cells. On the other hand, cancer stem cells have limited potential to proliferate and do not contribute to tumor growth. This is one of the reasons why they are hypothesized to be drug-resistant, as many drugs target rapidly dividing cells. The biological and functional distinctions between the different classes of cells make it possible to isolate cell populations that are enriched for tumor-initiating activity. This hypothesis may shed light on numerous poorly understood clinical phenomena. For example, it can support an explanation for common local recurrence, even when solid tumors appeared to be effectively treated by radiation or chemotherapy. Under this model, any cancer stem cells that have been spared during treatment will likely regenerate tumor tissues, thus causing a relapse in disease. Appropriately, therapeutic approaches based upon this model must then target cancer stem cells specifically for a permanent cure. If all cancer stem cell has been eliminated, it follows that the remaining cancerous tissues will have slowed growth or even stopped growing altogether. Although both models uphold that tumor initiation is achieved by a minor population of cells within a tumor, they vary greatly in their underlying biological principles. As such, each model presents different implications for research on the pathways involved in tumor progression and also for therapeutic strategies to eradicate cancer cells. In 2009, Eric Landers and Robert Weinberg's group at MIT conducted a high-throughput screening of more than 16,000 compounds using the Ekaterin knockdown HMLE breast cancer cells which rapidly undergone EMT and exhibit CD44 high and CD24 low marker profile, mimicking human mammary cancer stem cells. The study identified 32 compounds that exhibited selective toxicity toward the breast mammary cancer stem cells. One compound, salinomycin, reduces the proportion of mammary cancer stem cells by 100-fold relative to paclitaxel, a commonly used breast cancer chemotherapeutic drug. Importantly, treatment of mice with salinomycin inhibits mammary tumor growth in vivo and induces increased epithelial differentiation of tumor cells. 
In addition, global gene expression analyses show that salinomycin treatment results in the loss of expression of breast mammary cancer stem cells gene signature, demonstrating the ability to identify agents with specific toxicity for epithelial mammary cancer stem cells. In a separate study using the neoplastic human pluripotent stem cells model, Saclos et al. identified 51 compounds that could induce differentiation and overcome neoplastic self-renewal of the cancer stem cells by inhibiting OCT4 and SOX2 expression. They identified thioridazine, an antipsychotic drug, selectively targets the neoplastic cells and impairs human somatic cancer stem cells capable of in vivo leukemic disease initiation while having no effect on normal blood stem cells. The drug antagonizes dopamine receptors that are expressed on cancer stem cells and on breast cancer cells as well, suggesting that dopamine receptors may serve as a biomarker for diverse malignancies. Although cancer stem cells model suggests that inhibiting cancer stem cells renewal or promoting their differentiation should induce tumor regression, recent studies have shown that non-stem cancer cells can also transdifferentiate into cancer stem cells and confer resistance to therapy. Therefore, there is an urgent need to identify novel approaches to target both cancer stem cells and non-stem cancer cells simultaneously. Previously, our group and others have shown that breast cancer cell lines contain a small population of cells that mimic cancer stem cell behaviors. Similar to primary breast cancers, cell line-derived cancer stem cells are enriched in cells with the CD44 high, CD24 low, and epithelial-specific antigen-positive phenotype. Importantly, as few as 100 CD44 high, CD24 low, and epithelial-specific antigen-positive cells can form tumors in the in vivo limiting dilution assay, validating the use of cell lines to elucidate the unique mechanisms that govern maintenance and survival of tumorigenic breast cancer stem cells. Using the validated in vitro system, we conducted high-throughput screen using a chemical library consisting of 1,672 diverse bioactive small molecules to rapidly identify candidate molecules that could target both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells. We identified 193 compounds that could target both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells. Interestingly, these hits share common molecular targets or structure similarity with BCL2, mTOR, CDK, HDAC, or EGFR inhibitors, suggesting that inhibition of these targets could elicit growth inhibitory effects against both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells. Of note, inhibition of mTOR and CDK have been previously implicated in the regulation of cell survival in both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem cancer cells, independently validating our findings. Since recent reports have shown that epigenetic mechanisms can influence breast cancer stemness and the utility of HDAC inhibitors as epigenetic drugs for targeting both cancer stem cells and non-stem cancer cells have been demonstrated in hematological and other solid malignancies. We sought to investigate whether HDAC inhibitors could synergize conventional chemotherapeutic agents in targeting both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem cancer cells. As shown here, HDAC inhibitors synergizes doxorubicin sensitivity in both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem cancer cells. Of note, preclinical studies and clinical trials testing the efficacy, toxicity, and utility of different HDAC inhibitors, both as monotherapies or in combination with other therapies, is currently ongoing. Whether these combinations will enhance the efficacy or reduce the toxicity and tumor resistance to therapy remain to be further investigated. In a separate study, we also showed that breast cancer stem cells are inherently more sensitive to metformin, but resistant to other chemotherapeutic agents. Of note, metformin is an AMP-activated protein kinase activator. It is a relatively safe drug that is widely used for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, obesity, and polycystic ovarian syndrome. We also tested other AMPK activators such as ACAR and A769662. Unfortunately, no such selective sensitivity was observed in the breast cancer stem cells treated with these agents, suggesting that the effects of metformin could be independent of AMPK. 
to further test whether metformin could synergize chemotherapeutic agents in targeting both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells, we co-treated the cells with various concentration of metformin together with 5-fluoracil, epirubicin, and cyclophosphamide combination chemotherapy as according to the clinical ratio. As shown here, metformin FEC combination chemotherapy in both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells, independent of ER, PR, and HER2 status, further demonstrating the potential benefit of metformin in breast cancer treatment. Next, we investigated whether the synergistic effects of metformin is dependent on AMPK. As shown here, metformin activated AMPK in both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells. However, knockdown of endogenous AMPK only abrogated the synergistic effects of metformin in non-stem breast cancer cells, while no such effects were observed in the breast cancer stem cells. These results suggest that the synergistic effects of metformin and FEC is AMPK-dependent in parental breast cancer cells, but AMPK-independent in breast cancer stem cells. Recent studies have suggested that metformin might inhibit tumor cell proliferation through inhibiting complex 1 of the respiratory chain in mitochondria and production of ATP. To determine the mechanism by which metformin might affect metabolism, we analyzed its effects on mitochondrial complex 1 activity, glucose consumption, lactate production, and intracellular ATP generation in breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells. As shown here, metformin decreased complex 1 activity by more than 70% in non-stem breast cancer cells and up to 90% in breast cancer stem cells. In addition, metformin accelerated glucose consumption from medium more severely in breast cancer stem cells than in non-stem breast cancer cells and augmented production of lactate indicative of increased in glycolysis. Interestingly, despite the increased in glycolysis, the production of intracellular ATP was severely hampered, particularly in breast cancer stem cells. FEC have been shown to cause DNA damage by formation of DNA adducts and interstrand crosslinks, resulting in DNA double-strand breaks, which is repaired by non-homologous end-joining and homologous recombination repair through induction of histone H2AX phosphorylation and formation of gamma H2AX foci. Because ATP is required for H2AX phosphorylation and the subsequent complicated DNA repair process, we speculated that the depletion of ATP in breast cancer stem cells by metformin might compromise the DNA repair process. Using a comma to say, we showed that treatment of non-stem breast cancer cells and breast cancer stem cells with FEC alone or in combination with metformin for 24 hours caused severe DNA damage, resulting in the increase of broken DNA as the comet tails after single-cell gel electrophoresis. In non-stem breast cancer cells treated with FEC alone or in combination with metformin, the DNA damage could be repaired, as evidenced by the reduction of the DNA tails at 72 hours after treatment. However, the breast cancer stem cells were unable to repair the DNA damage when treated with a combination of metformin and FEC. Interestingly, supplementation of exogenous ATP completely abrogated the dephosphorylation of H2AX, reduced DNA damage and rescue breast cancer stem cells death induced by metformin-FEC combination. Together, these results indicate that the striking synergistic elimination of breast cancer stem cells following metformin FEC treatment is due to the impaired ATP production induced by metformin to support the repair of DNA damage induced by FEC. To determine whether the synergistic effects of the metformin and FEC combination treatment could be replicated in the clinical setting, we established a pilot study to determine the safety and effect on tumor response in breast cancer stem cells. Non-diabetic breast cancer patients were treated with metformin and neoadjuvant FEC chemotherapy. A total of 5 out of 10 patients showed either complete or partial response to the combination treatment. The sum of perpendicular diameters of all lesions were significantly reduced. Fresh frozen tissue samples were also obtained before and after treatment. We investigated the change of breast cancer stem cells population using flow cytometry. As shown here, the percentage of breast cancer stem cells was significantly reduced following metformin and FEC combination treatment. Although not statistically significant, 
the reduction of percent breast cancer stem cells appears to be higher in responders compared to non-responders. These results are further supported by an observational study involving 2,592 patients where diabetic patients treated with metformin experienced a response rate of 24%, which was three times greater than the response rate in diabetic women not treated with metformin. Taken together, our results demonstrated that metformin may have synergistic cytotoxic activity with FEC chemotherapy through distinct mechanism in breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells. In non-stem breast cancer cells, metformin synergizes FEC sensitivity through activation of AMPK-dependent mechanism. In breast cancer stem cells, the synergistic effects of metformin is mediated through impairments of intracellular ATP production and the ability of breast cancer stem cells to repair FEC-induced DNA damage in an AMPK-independent manner. Finally, we also showed that HDAC inhibitors alone or in combination with chemotherapeutic agents could target both breast cancer stem cells and non-stem breast cancer cells.